back up, back to our base coat brush. Uh, a little bit on the brush. This is going to be tricky to know exactly where I'm going to want to put it. Because I'm going to get some lines in after this, but let's try. Uh, let's have some here. And just putting in like a, a guideline to start with of where I want it. Let's put some in here. Blend that out a little bit. And on the other side. Oops, um, take out a little bit of paint, got too much on my brush. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to put some along the front edges of these as well. Then we're going to diffuse this or blend this out a little bit in a minute. But I'm just putting in basic outlines first. Put into the gap a little bit, never mind. And then I'm going to do a little bit of, well, cheaty blending, not proper blending, but feathering, where, for example, here, I'm going to go along this edge and just pull it down away from the centre in a kind of jaggedy line, is about the best way I can describe it, like that. Because what the feathering does... The, the fact that the line is not straight, what that does is give the illusion that the two colours are blending together, or helps the illusion, you would say. Just kind of like that. So this is about two parts of the Avalon Sunset Desert Yellow mix, or just Avalon Sunset if you wanted. Two parts of that mixed with one part of your Shabti Bone. Just trying to face myself quickly. Okay, now I want to feather out the lines on the separators a little bit. Here, pulling it down towards the end. Yep, yeah. and then I'm going to put a little bit again, just touch the edges of um, this lower part here with this mix. But I probably won't do the final highlight on those bits simply because uh, we want to give the impression the light, the brightest of the light wouldn't quite get that low. Still just using my trusty old base coat brush. There are better brushes out there but far better brushes, but for the price of them, they do their job. They don't last particularly long, where they certainly do the job we want. Okay, so something like that, in the centre there. Okay, um, and now just some pure bleach bone from Guillaume's workshop. Sorry, your shabti bone, bleach bone is the same thing if you have bleach bone. The names of the paints have been changed to protect the innocent. The paints are the same. Well, some of them are. But a shabti bone is the same as bleach bone.
Again, just water it down. Consistency of milk soup. Milky soup. Maybe I'll write a song called Milky Soup. Then for this, I'm actually going to use a different brush. I am going to use, again, just a workshop one, Games Workshop. I'm going to go down a bit to a standard brush with the orange end. I tend to not go much lower than that, to be honest. Standard brush has got, as long as you look after the tip of the brush, standard brush tip is good enough for most details, I think. But I mean, if you want to, that's why they make fine details and stuff. Details and fine details. You can go lower if you're more comfortable. It's all about finding what you're comfortable with in your own painting. I don't know why I said it like that. Let's try and get so you can see this. All I'm going to do now is do a line of the phone in the middle of my previous colour, not all the way along, just at certain points to show that there is a, a reflection to the surface. There. There. It's very difficult to see, I think, sometimes, for me anyway, as I'm looking on the, the camera, how easy it is to see whether it's what I've painted that's reflecting or the light that's reflecting. But I suppose that's good, because that's what you're looking for. You want it to look as if there is a light reflecting. So, and the other side, just where, right on the edges of these squares, just where the light will be hitting. Of course, this would work for your fire warriors or uh, broadsides or crisis suits, any of that. It's all very armour platey, the towel. Like that. Okay. show you an idea for some camo. The bravery test, as Bob Ross used to say. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, you can always look him up. Because um, sometimes people like to do a bit of camo on the towel. Um, what I think looks quite nice... Scorch brown or battlefield brown. Let's go with this. So this is battlefield brown from P3, Privateer Press. I like it because it's a very dark brown, which is actually quite hard to come by. Um, you can always mix a bit of black with Scorch Brown if you want to, or whatever that's called now, Scorch Brown. Just taking a bit out, putting on the palette. Privateer Press paints are pretty thin as it is, um, but I am going to stick a bit of water in it, just because uh, you want to improve the flow just a bit. Uh, brown's a nice contrast as well, because you've got that bright yellow. A bit of brown camo works quite well. Um, I'm going to go back to my base coat brush for this as well. And then, oh, I hope I've washed it properly. Just going to do some slightly sporadic higgledy piggledy brown camo patches. Uh, it's very hard to get this wrong. You want it to look fairly organic, so just kind of dab it on here and there. You might want more than one coat again, but you want fairly irregular blobby shapes is the best way I can put it. Let's have a big one up here. 
And yes, I know we're going over the highlight we just did, but it doesn't really matter. Still one there. I may not do the whole thing just so you can see the difference. I mean, you don't have to do this at all if you don't want to. I just think uh, you might like the towel colour scheme but just want to change it up a little bit. Because of uh, the nature of the amount of different worlds the towel operate on, you can really do their armour any colour you like. You can have sort of winter camos or jungle camos or regular army camos if you wanted to. Do them block colours, anything you like. 